Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If everybody would take a seat that's not performing, if you're sit standing up, we might make you perform. I'm kidding. Hi, I'm Lou Ann Hunt. I work for the City of Lynchburg in Communications and Marketing. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you here tonight to the State of the City. We are so glad you all are able to join us here at City Hall and live on Comcast Channel 15 LTV. Lynchburg has a wonderful arts and cultural community. Everything from unique art to live theater, the spoken word and opera, just to name a few. So tonight we have two very special guest performances to begin our evening. The first performance is brought to us from Opera on the James. Members of the Tyler program will share a bit of their show with us. And following them will be Taylor Rodriguez, who will be performing several well-known songs that you might recognize. Unfortunately, our third performer is not able to be with us tonight due to an illness, so we do wish her a speedy recovery. Please join me as we welcome the Tyler program. Thank you. Good evening, I am Rebecca Shorstein, and I'm so honored to be here tonight. Um, I'm here singing uh, with the opera program Cosi Fan Tutte, and tonight to show two very different sides of the soprano voice, uh, with Tom Getty, I will first be singing an opera aria followed by some musical theater.
son. Always be a good boy, don't you ever play with guns. But I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. And I hear that whistle blowing, I hang my head and cry. I've been here to rich folks eating on a fancy dining car. They're probably drinking coffee and smoking big cigars. But I knew I had it coming. I knew I can't be free. But when people keep them moving, well, that's what tortures me. Well, if they freed me from this prison and that railroad train was mine, I'd bet I'd move it on a little farther down the line Far from Folsom Prison That's where I want to stay And I live that lonesome whistle Blow my blues away Yeah! Thank you very much! Now, how about an Elvis tune for you? Is that all right? Y'all know a little song called Blue Suede Shoes? I don't know why Carl Perkins wrote about blue suede shoes, but who knows? Here we go. Well, it's a one full of money, a two full of show, a three to get ready now. Go, cat, and go, but don't you step on my blue suede shoes. Oh, you can do anything, but lay off of my blue suede shoes. Oh, you can knock me down, step in my face, slatter my name all over the place. I do anything you want to do, but I'll, uh, honey, lay off of them shoes. And don't you step on my blue suede shoes. Oh, you can do anything, but lay off of my blue suede shoes. Oh, here we go now, make some noise. Well, you can knock me down, step in my face, slatter my name all over the place. I do anything you want to do, but I'll uh -huh, lay off of them shoes and don't you step on my blue suede shoes. Well, you can do anything, but lay off of my blue suede shoes. Well, it's a blue, blue, blue suede shoe. Blue, blue, blue suede shoe, yeah. Blue, blue, and blue suede shoe, baby. Blue, blue, and blue suede shoe. Oh, you can do anything but lay off of my blue suede shoes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Wow, standing room only. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Vice Mayor Trinae Tweedy, and tonight I would like to welcome you and thank you for joining us. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Mayor, Joan F. Foster. down a touch. Oh, my family's here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's a nice pleasant surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, members of City Council, city staff, citizens, and honored guests, welcome and good evening. We're going to do a little task right from the beginning. So we're going to say, please rise. And I'm going to ask, first of all, I'm going to ask the Mayor's Youth Council to come up here, you awesome people, you. Come on up. <laughs> I 
and they're all up here. I'm going to ask all of you all to please rise. Because the members of the Mayor's Youth Council will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and I do want everyone to remain standing as Morgan Gafford, who is a member of the Mayor's Youth Council, sings the national anthem. And our flag is right here, to our, my right. <clears throat> to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. that didn't she she is a junior in high school just awesome awesome you know I'm so proud of the mayor's youth council these young men and women we get together on certain Sundays because that's they're so busy it's the only time they can actually do it but they advise me on issues affecting our youth they work to promote healthy lifestyles, and they volunteer in the community. They represent sophomores, juniors, and seniors from public and private high schools, as well as students being homeschooled. Please join me in thanking them again. <laughs> They're gonna have a walk on March the 26th, and make sure I've got that date correct, a Saturday, and it's a walk run to raise awareness about healthy lifestyles and how important it is that we fight childhood obesity. <clears throat> well, you know, earlier this evening, we were um, honored to have representatives of the local art and cultural community to share their talent with us. And we were kind of hiding in the back, but we could hear them. Lynchburg is so blessed to, such, to have such a rich and diverse arts and cultural community with everything from opera, and you heard the opera on the James Singers, to rock and roll, and you heard Taylor Rodriguez, and we were to have a Bollywood dancer, and I think she got the flu. So I think we just gave you some Bollywood music, but there's a cultural event coming up um, next month, so stay tuned. You'll hear more of that. So let's give them 
a round of applause. They were excellent. <clears throat> now, I hope that you will indulge me for a moment, and I want to acknowledge a few people in this room. Of course, I wish to acknowledge my colleagues on the dais behind me. Councilmember Sterling Wilder, Councilmember Mary Jane Dolan, Councilwoman, Councilmember Jeff Helgeson, Councilmember Turner Perro, and Councilmember Randy Nelson, and of course, Vice Mayor Trené Tweedy. Thank you all, you're awesome to work with. However, there's another group that's pretty awesome too, and none of us on city council are able to serve without the support of our families. And I want to take this opportunity to recognize them. And I know some of my family standing in the back because it's so great to see all of you and this wonderful turnout. But I want to thank our families, to thank them for really putting up with us, our late meetings, the endless emails, the phone calls in the middle of the night, and I'm sorry, honey, missed dinners. But please join me. You, would you all stand up and welcome them tonight. Thank you all, and we dearly love all of you all, and there's some in the back. Thank you all. I also want to recognize any of the area legislatives, folks, former city council members, I did see a few, and retirees from our city who have joined us tonight. Please stand so that we can recognize all of you as well. Be there. And thank you so much for coming. It's good to see all of you all. And also, I want to thank a man. I can, I've got a bead on him right now. I want to thank Dr. Larry Massey. Yes for being with us tonight. As you know, when former school superintendent Scott Brabrand left and he resigned, Dr. Massey returned to Lynchburg to serve once again as interim superintendent. And are we glad that you did, sir. I know that very soon we will be welcoming our new superintendent, Dr. Crystal Edwards, to Lynchburg. And we'll be saying goodbye. But Dr. Massey and any school board member, present or past, who are here tonight, please stand again. Dr. Massey, stand again because we want to applaud you again. Any school board member? Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, lastly, we do have another recognition. We want to recognize the men and the women to my right. City Manager Bonnie Severtek, Assistant City Manager John Hughes, whoops, and Deputy City Manager Charles Hartgrove, and Assistant City Manager John Hughes. And all the men and women sitting behind you who work, or our city's leadership team. These public servants work hard every day in service to this community. And we're fortunate to have leaders of your caliber serving our community. They also represent the 1,200 committed employees who provide services to the community every day. Let me also welcome our new fire tree. Greg Wormster tonight. Thank all of you. Greg, stand up so everyone can see you. I know. Thank all of you and all our dedicated workers for your commitment and for your service to our citizens. You know, service isn't reserved for just the individuals who work in government. No community can thrive without involved citizens who are committed to service. Tonight, we are recognizing five individuals 
from different walks of life who take service very seriously. We are honored to present them with the Mayor's Award of Excellence. And at this time, I ask that our fellow members of City Council introduce them to all of you tonight. They're awesome folks. Council Member Sterling Wilder will begin. Good evening. I have the pleasure of introducing Thais Blanding for the 2018 Mayor's Award of Excellence. Um, our first recipient for the Mayor's Award of Excellence is someone who saw a need and did something about it. Thais Blanding didn't need to join an organization or fill out, fill out an application to get involved. She just did something. Thais owns and operates a hair salon on Fifth Street. And that's where you will find her when she's not organizing, organizing donations, finan financial assistance for educational trips. Several years ago, she noticed several homeless people near her shop and was concerned that they didn't have warm, a warm place to sleep. Thais um, put out a call on social media to collect coats, scarves, socks, blankets at her own salon. The response was overwhelming, so she kept it going. In 2012, Thais um, and members of her family attended President Obama's inauguration in Washington, D.C. As they watched that historical ceremony, she realized that not all Lynchburg children had the same opportunity. When she returned home, she set out to change that. Her plan was to provide inner city kids the opportunity to go on educational and fun trips at no cost to the children or parents. All the children had to do was write an essay titled, What I Want to Be When I Grow Up. The first year, they raised $2,500, providing a train trip to Washington for 20 children. The next year, 40 children went on an overnight trip to DC, and this year, they, they will be visiting the NASA Space Museum in Chantilly, Virginia. Thais sum, summed up her activities up in the best way. I do a lot. But if you love what you are doing, there is no work involved in it. In the, involved, that's normal. Um, please watch the video to learn more. Thais is a wonderful person. Um, she's godly, first of all. Uh, she's like the big ma in the family. Um, she's loyal, um, caring, loving, good spirit. She is a good person. It's, it's really hard to say what is, is her motivating force, but she just, she does things just spontaneously to help people, she just has a just a strange passion. Number, number uh, recently, over the last couple of years, she was has collected coats in her in her shop so that she could take to the homeless people. Um, and once or twice a year, she'll take a whole bunch of uh, coats and gloves and hats to the homeless people. She'll go out and find out where they live, and she'll take things to the trees or whatever. And you'll see her going all through the neighborhoods um, where homeless people live, doing that kind of thing. Um, she has a passion for people. Uh, and so you try to help a young person to develop themselves uh, to be the very best that they can be. And that's what she does. Uh, she works with these young people, even in her beauty sal uh, salon and on her job. She hires young women to come in and work uh, with her, to work in her shop, and gives them the opportunity to train and learn to do what she does and to do quality work in the way in which they do it. Um, during President Obama's final inauguration, it was a lot of us that decided that we were gonna go, that we needed to go because it was gonna be his final one. So we all went, and while I was there, I started looking at my nieces and my nephews and all of the kids that were there, and I got to thinking, I was like, I never got to go on trips like this when I was little because my mom couldn't afford for us to go. So what I decided to do, I ran and found my pastor and I told him that I want to take some kids to D.C. And I didn't want them to have to pay for anything. I didn't want the parents to have to come out of pocket for anything. I wanted all of the money to be volunteered and donated. 
I deserve to go on this trip to Washington, D.C. because I am very smart and intelligent. I make good. The only requirement is that they have to write an essay requiring what they want to be when they grow up, which gives them a spark to even want to do something else in their, you know, in their life when they grow up. I was going to let that be my last time doing it, but the next year, kids asked me again, are you going to do that trip again? And I was like, um, okay, I do it every other year. So I wrote President Obama a letter and he wrote me back and that hyped me up even more to want to keep on doing it. And he um, commended me on a community service work. Dear Thais, thank you for writing. I appreciated you telling me about your trip, your trip you took to Washington to attend my second inauguration. What an exciting opportunity that must have been for your nieces. It's clear your dedication to making this visit happen touched many lives in Lynchburg. Thank you again for writing. I wish you all the best for another successful trip, and I hope that you will stop by the White House while you're in town. Sincerely, Barack Obama. I, I, it, be, it, fills, it fills you up each time. It's no re, it, the reward is seeing the expression on someone else's face. That's, that's the payment. You don't need, it, it fills your heart. I thought I got away with that. <laughs> um, just thank you all. If you would like to donate for this year's trip, <laughs> I will be collecting money. Um, just thank you. Our second recipient is Doug Pugh. Doug and his wife Polly, 53 years, moved to Lynchburg five years ago. Having recently retired as a software engineer, he began looking for something else to do and volunteering fit the bill. Doug had shown dogs and bred dogs for over 30 years when he lived in Maryland and North Carolina. So it was natural for him to join the Dog Owners Training Club here in Lynchburg. In the fall of 2015, Doug was diagnosed with prostate cancer and his perspective on life and living, as he says, was altered forever. After months of treatment at Centra's Ellen B. Pearson Regional Cancer Center, he was overwhelmed by the level of care and support that he received from staff and volunteers while a patient. He decided to give back a bit of that personal help for other patients and families who were going through the stressful path of cancer treatment and recovery. As a volunteer with Centra at the Cancer Center, Doug has served as a front lobby ambassador, librarian, and steward of the extensive flower and vegetable garden installed two years ago. In his words, Doug sums up being a volunteer in this way. I have been fortunate and blessed to have found such wonderful outlets for my abilities and energies. I am grateful to be a resident of su in such a caring, resourceful, and giving community. Life is good. Let's watch a video to learn more about Doug. I thought at first when I retired I was going to be bored to death and have nothing to do. So I looked around. We've been involved in dogs for many, many years, and uh, they have a very nice dog training club here in Lynchburg. So right away we got involved with the dog training club. Well, he's always willing to come whenever we have any type of dog event. We put on agility trials, which involve uh, setting up a lot of the dog obstacles, and he's always there to help set up. Um, he's 
uh, been an agility trial secretary before, which is doing all the paperwork and taking the entries. He, for, for our dog training club, he uh, is a volunteer instructor and rally obedience is his specialty. When I met a group of master gardeners, Hill City master gardeners from Lynchburg, when we first put the garden in last year, um, I really was appreciative and really enjoyed the vast spread of knowledge they had about that sort of thing. So they helped us plan it, they helped us decide what to grow, what was productive, what would be good for patients. We work with a nutritionist uh, here at, at the cancer center uh, to pick foods that were good. So we grew all of that last summer and put vegetables out here on the front information desk every morning all during the growing season for patients. I think uh, he, seem, he sees a need. He, he, he's a person that can identify need and and address it and, and, and uh, he's able to pull together elements uh, based on his experience, his life's experiences uh, to make a, a, make a difference and uh, makes a uh, impact in the community where he sees, where he thinks that they may not exist. About three years ago, when I was diagnosed with, with cancer, uh, I ended up over here at the Pearson Cancer Center, and I knew nothing about it. I had no experience with friends or relatives over here. Uh, so they, they worked me through that for about six months during treatment and all that sort of thing. Um, when I finished, I was so, I guess, uh, impressed with the level of care and the treatment and the concern and, the, and, and whatnot that I got here. Uh, that I decided I wanted to give back a little bit to them. So I volunteered through the Centra volunteer program. I think he, he understands how the person feels walking into the door, in the door. He's been in their shoes. And I think sometimes that makes the best volunteer. You know what the person's going through and how you can be supportive to them and helping them. And you, you're a sign of hope. Uh, he's, when you're standing, he's a sign of hope because he's standing there volunteering and he's, he knows what they've been through and he has that sense of, um, I'm there for you, I'm there for you. My fear of being bored and having nothing to do when I retired has not come to pass and I've uh, felt very fulfilled and, and very grateful that I've had the chance to give back some of the the, the, the care and, and attention and help that I got uh, when I needed it. So. begin to tell everybody how much it, it means to be here and how much appreciation you feel for what you have done. Uh, the organizations that you saw in the film that I, I'm primarily involved with, the, the uh, Pearson Cancer Center of Centris, the uh, Dog Owner Training Club and the Hill City Gardeners uh, have contributed, I, I saw a number last year, in excess of 100,000 hours of volunteer time. So all I can do, I know People who have to go to work every day probably don't have quite as much time as us loafers, but I'd encourage everybody to just, just give an hour a week or two hours a week whenever you can. There are so many different uh, outlets for giving that that uh, I can't stress enough how, how rewarding it feels to do that. So, uh, thanks again. I enjoyed this, and it's, uh, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. After 27 years of active duty in the Navy and nine years of living in Northern Virginia, Jeff and his wife Sally Schneider discovered and relocated to Lynchburg in 2000.
Their passion for history and preservation led them to purchase their home on historic Diamond Hill, which marked the beginning of their journey of professional and volunteer service to the Lynchburg community. As the executive director of the Lynchburg Historical Foundation for 15 years, Sally initiated many new programs, projects, and events to bring awareness and appreciation for the need to actively preserve the city's architectural heritage. She helped save a historic home from demolition, worked to provide a shelter for the packet boat marshal, and most recently led the charge to have Dr. Walter Johnson's house and tennis court designated as one of Virginia's most endangered historic sites. Perhaps Sally's more visible accomplishments were spearheading the fundraising and recasting in bronze of Lynchburg's historic water bearer statue, which now resides at the central point of focus on the Bluff Walk. Next to Sally, throughout her service, was her foremost volunteer, her husband, Jeff. In 2011, Jeff was recognized as the Lynchburg Historical Foundation's Volunteer of the Decade. <laughs> Jeff's passion for preservation was exemplified in his service as a three-term member of the Historic Preservation Commission and the Community Development Advisory Committee. Jeff also serves on the Board of Directors and is treasurer of the Diamond Hill Historic Society and the Dante Alighieri Society of Virginia. Together, Jeff and Sally have, meal, have been meal preparers and servers for Kids Haven for more than 10 years. Their most recent community service undertaking was the very first Perry Restaurant Group sponsored Grateful Gathering. Grateful Gathering is a Thanksgiving dinner prepared and served to those in need in this community. Please watch the screen as we thank both of them. Jeff and Sally, of course, could have lived anywhere in the world and they chose to come to Lynchburg, which has just been a great gift to our whole community and certainly to our congregation as well. And, uh, you know, having been in the Navy, uh, they've traveled many places and have lived a number of places and just bring a lot of uh, energy and, and new ideas and, and perspective to our community. I remember the very first time I met them and I remember what she had on. And I thought, this is an interesting woman. And I had no idea how much they were going to contribute to the city of Lynchburg. And I say they because it was both of them. We love it. And um, we go to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, and it's a, a, just an amazing congregation Church family. family. Yeah. And um, then I started working at the Historical Foundation and we met so many more yeah. people and um, just, I mean, it just grew from, from there. And I especially want to thank the Lynchburg Historical Foundation under the leadership of Snally, uh, Sally Schneider, who really spearheaded this effort. She made LHF a viable organization that meant something to people. And the city recognized and that and once she'd been there for a little while and started doing things. And they would reach out to her as much as she would reach out to the city and these other organizations, the museum, foundation, and what have you. We have worked on multiple projects together. Um, but the most notable project that Sally and Jeff and I worked on is the Guide to the Historic Homes of Lynchburg. This guide showcases um, you know, all the diverse architecture in all seven of our districts. Um, it is probably one of the most, if not the most, sought after guide at our visitor center. And the work they did on that is just second to none. Uh, their contributions uh, were fundamental and selfless. And the thing that I found very impressive uh, was the degree of discipline that Sally brought to the organization and it was unprecedented prior to that time. 
Well, they, they both certainly exhibit a, a contagious enthusiasm and watching Sally uh, with Jeff's help uh, with the Grateful Gathering, the, the inaugural event downtown back in November to do a Thanksgiving meal for folks in the community and, and just the way she pulled that together so quickly uh, through her network of, of friends and contacts and uh, just the energy and, and enthusiasm she brought to that. Uh, you know, really, it sets both of them apart. And I would say that their energy that they brought to downtown and to our Diamond Hill and to every aspect of anything they touched was, is truly remarkable. The work that they have done to promote tourism through their preservation efforts is going to be felt for years to come. They continue to make this a great place to live and more important from my lens, a great place for visitors. So congratulations Jeff and Sally, well deserved. Oh, it would be great to have a city full of, or a congregation full of <laughs> Jeff and Sally Schneiders. We're a team. <laughs> have We're been for a, a long team. time. We have been for all these years, um, really 50. And, um, you know, you just, I, I'm just glad. I was very happy that it was for both of us. like watching that video whoo with the camera oh my goodness anyway <laughs> anyway I just want to say that I was thrilled as I said in the video that Jeff and I get to share this you know you go through life doing your separate things but as a couple um, 27 years in the Navy I was the D slash W the dependent wife and it's like oh you're Captain Schneider's wife etc well <laughs> After a while, when we were here, Jeff worked up in Northern Virginia, so he was gone most of the week, and I was learning my way through the city and all of you and the Historical Foundation, and he would come home and we'd go to something, and they'd say, oh, you're Sally's husband. <laughs> so <laughs> we are a team, and um, I'm, I'm very proud to share this with my number one squeeze. <laughs> Well, I, I couldn't say it any better, but I will say uh, 27 years in the Navy, uh, we left uh, home in 1971, uh, and our home was changing every two, three years, and what have you, and our family was the Navy and our church. When we got to Lynchburg and discovered Lynchburg, we immediately felt like we were in a family here. And I, I think there was a piece that I said, uh, when, you, when you move about, you have to kind of look to find a place. But this community reached out to us, and we're so grateful that we're here and we'll be here for a long time. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, our final recipient tonight is Chris Boswell. After graduating from the Virginia Military Institute in 2000 with degrees in both business and economics, Chris began his professional career in Lynchburg with a pharmaceutical company. As a young boy growing up in both Richmond and Martinsville, and then throughout through his college years, he volunteered at local soup kitchens, went on mission trips, and volunteered with the local Boys and Girls Club. So once he had settled in, in Lynchburg, Chris began searching for opportunities to give back to his community. He began volunteering with the local Boys and Girls Club, and now years later, he has served as president and still serves on his board of directors. 
In 2014, Chris, with the help of Lanny Duncan, started a chapter of Mustaches for Kids in the Lynchburg area. This year, the growers raised over 34, this first year, excuse me, the growers raised over 34,000 with the Boys and Girls Club as a beneficiary of the funds. Over four years, Mustaches for Kids in Lynchburg has raised more than $300,000 for Lynchburg charities with the help of dedicated growers and sponsors. Chris resides in Lynchburg with his wife, Megan, of almost five years now and their four dogs. Let's learn more about my fellow kid at Chris Boswell. I'm a basketball player. Um, not many people know that uh, because I played basketball 100 pounds ago. Martinsville didn't have a boys and girls club. And a lot of guys that I played basketball with uh, are either dead or in jail or have been in jail. Um, I feel that if they had had an outlet like a Boys and Girls Club or some kind of community presence what is like they offer here and we, that we try to provide for the kids in this area, that probably wouldn't have happened. When they got one started here, I didn't even know. It was in 2005 and a couple of friends of mine, uh, Matt White, who was one of the first presidents, uh, was on the board and he approached me and asked me if I would consider you know, supporting our local Boys and Girls Club. And I said, absolutely, that just, that's a no-brainer. He is committed, he is driven, and he loves sales. And it is exactly the mix that the club needed when they brought him on. And he cares about the mission. Chris has a heart for all kids. It's not uh, just for the young people that the Boys and Girls Club serves. He would like to collaborate with all youth serving agencies uh, to prevent kids from going down the wrong path. I feel that with every child that, that goes through our program, graduates high school, stays out of jail, doesn't get pregnant, um, we're enhancing the system. Um, you know, we're making it better. It costs $130,000 a year to, to incarcerate a kid. Um, it only costs $1,500 a year to send a kid to the Boys and Girls Club. So, you know, that's, that's powerful, powerful stuff. And, you know, you can't, you can't help everybody, but at least we're going to be now in a position to where we can help as many as we possibly can. Super genuine guy. Uh, honestly, when I first met him, he's, he's quite outgoing and kind of loud and can be a little demonstrative at times. Um, but that's just his personality. I mean, it's, 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 it's his passion. So he's passionate about life, he's passionate about everything he's involved in. A good friend of ours started one in Richmond 10 or 12 years ago. We donated to him every year. Uh, Chris was on the board down here at the Boys and Girls Club and said, hey, how about we start, start some in Lynchburg? You want to help me out? I said, yeah, sure. Not thinking, you know, okay, raise, raise a little bit of money the first year. And, and then it's just grown exponentially, um, mainly because of his leadership and his passion behind it. He heard about it and he rallied the troops and that's just that spirit of him. He gets people together. Even when you don't want to be together, it's like, come on, we can do this. And next thing you know, he raised 140 something thousand. Unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. So I'm just so happy that he's on my team. <laughs> I don't know if we want more like Chris Boswell, but no, uh, no, Chris is a, uh, is a great advocate and the city would, it would be wonderful if I had five or six more people like Chris on the board, but then no one would be able to get a word in edgewise. Get involved. Find somebody or find something you're passionate about. Lynchburg's a great place. Uh, it's a great place to live. There's a lot of great people here. There's a lot of great opportunity still to come here. And, you know, we're only as good, our city's only as good as the citizens that help make it that way. And I feel that the more people that get involved and care, it's better for everybody. It's just fulfilling, man. I, you know, I don't have children um, yet. Uh, God willing, that, that happens soon. Um, but I want Lynchburg to be a better place for everybody.
So I have to be honest, when I got the phone call from the mayor's office, um, growing up in Martinsville, when you get a call from the local government, I was like, oh no, what did I do wrong? Um, so this came as a complete shock to me. Um, but I think, did we leave something off the video? I thought there was some more. How are the taxes coming? Almost done. Nice. All right, what do you think? Not bad. I guess the, uh, the bright side is next year we can take the child tax credit. Surprise everyone, Baby Boswell is coming in August of 2018, and y'all are the first to know. So, um, I didn't have kids of my own, and Friday was official that we're, Megan and I will be parents in August, so. Um, <laughs> This, uh, you know, I'm not from here, but I am from here. Um, Lynchburg is my home, and I uh, made a home here 18 years ago, and it's full of, of very special people. Um, you know, I've got a lot of them here tonight. Uh, my goddaughter's here. Um, you know, fellow VMI alum, Turner, and uh, my parents are here from, from Richmond, and my best friend and business partner's here from Martinsville, and Lanny's here from Mustaches for Kids, and it's, it's just awesome. And um, I used to, people would say, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from Martinsville, or I'm from Richmond, and I'm, I'm, I'm from Lynchburg. And um, I was taught my whole life in a, in a world that's becoming more and more selfish. I was taught to be selfless. And um, it's, it's, been a, it's been a tough week, but a very fulfilling week, because last week, one of the most selfless people that I know which is my grandfather, passed. But he's in a better place because the last six months were, were brutal. Um, and he taught me a lot about service and a lot about doing everything you can for your family and your friends. And it trickled down to my mom, who's here tonight, and, and she also taught me that. So it was a no-brainer that I would end up doing something um, for something bigger than me. And um, Lynchburg's bigger than me. The Boys and Girls Club is bigger than me. And now Mustaches for Kids has just come out of nowhere. And it sounds funny, but um, our goal this year is going to be we're going to raise $180,000 in 30 days for, um, for kids in, in the month of November for local children's charities here in Lynchburg. And 100% of the donations go straight back to the charities. And thank you. So um, what started as a ha-ha, funny, funny, Gloria even laughed at me. Where's Gloria? Gloria, one of, she was the president of the board, when I, I think, when I came up with this idea, and she was like, you won't raise $500. <laughs> so uh, of course, if anybody tells me I can't do something, I'm going to do it. So um, thanks to everybody for being here, um, all the other recipients. What we do is, is for our community. You guys are great. And um, let's just keep doing it and make Lynchburg one of the best places ever. Well, aren't we fortunate to have these folks in our community? They're such committed individuals. They are working to make this place a better place. Chris, I don't think I can say anything tonight to top the, inf the uh, information you gave us in that little addendum. Uh, congratulations to you, my friend, and to your lovely wife. Another citizen, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> So let's give all our honorees another round of applause and thank them. Thank you. Writers, Doug, and Chris, you rock it. Thank you so much. All of us on the city council takes great pride 
in serving the Lynchburg community. You have elected us to make important decisions that really affect your life. And we take this responsibility very seriously. Our priority and the priority of this city's employees are to serve this community. The accomplishments we will report on tonight aren't just city government's accomplishments, though. They are this community's accomplishments. As we celebrate this evening, we should remember that community does not happen by accident. It takes ideas, it takes conversations, it takes relationships, resources, and efforts. It takes vision, it takes leadership, and it takes government and all the residents working together to make it happen. Do we have a perfect community? I don't think we can all agree that we do. Like any other city, we have our challenges, areas that need improvement, issues that need to be addressed, barriers that we must tear down. But despite our imperfections, you know what? I am so proud to say that we are Lynchburg strong. And when we work together, we will become much stronger. So thank you for being part of this wonderful community. It's critical that we act, though, strategically, that we plan wisely, and that we're willing to tackle the difficult issues. We are strong when we come together to address community concerns, and we're strong because of our diversity, not just because of our similarities. For a few minutes, the vice mayor and I want to talk about a few of the accomplishments of 2017. So bear with us, because we're so proud of some of these accomplishments. They've been a long time coming. City Council, working with staff, decided that there were key areas that we need to kind of hone in on. Um, we wanted to definitely create this we have this slogan, great place to live, work, and play. And we wanted to do that. So we created the areas and sort of put everything in these areas. Vibrant community, natural and built environments, safe community, economic development, and excellent government. What does all that mean? Well, let's talk a minute about vibrant community. That's healthy and active living. In 2012, we became a let's move city, and we never could have guessed that that campaign would be so successful, that we would receive five gold medals and become only one of only 78 communities in the country to reach that goal, and to be invited to the White House for former First Lady Michelle Obama's last harvest. We got to take two young people, and they got right out there, dug in the dirt with the President and the First Lady getting vegetables. It, it was a beautiful thing. We were the only city invited, so very proud of that. Last year, the Virginia Municipal League awarded the city and the Live Healthy program with the 2017 Innovation Award in Community Health <coughs> And on top of that, we got the prestigious 2017 President's Award, which is basically saying we had the best thing going in the state of Virginia, and I loved it. I loved it that we got that recognition. We want to thank all our partners especially. Now, these are our community partners. Remember, government can't do this by ourselves. The Central Virginia Health District, the Lynchburg Regional Business Alliance, and Centra's Congressional Health, excuse me, Congregational Health, for working to make this achievement possible. So thank, if you all are here tonight, any of you representing those three organizations, thank you for putting us on the, on the map of Virginia and on the map of the U.S. 
Our Parks and Recreation Department also plays a huge role in healthy and active living. In the 2015 Citizen Survey, and I'm really glad you were honest with us, some of you told us that we needed to, to get better in certain areas and that we weren't doing enough. So the department, and I'm talking about the Parks and Rec Department, began to strategically change that opinion. The outcome was, plain, was a plan to better serve the community. Last year, they were awarded five state awards, including one for the Hill City Hoops program. They also worked to ensure that the programs and activities being offered were meeting the diverse needs of this community. In the 2017 Citizen survey, survey, and we just got the results of that, you let us know that you, we were on track with meeting significant needs of this community and with a significant increase you showed us in satisfaction ratings. So we thank the department, thank you Jenny Jones, for seriously considering your opinion. We're best when we listen to you and working diligently to turn this around. Congratulations to the Parks and, De um, Parks and Rec Department and to their leader, Jenny Jones. Thank you all. Yes. Well, as cities go, you know we're pretty old. Actually, we're a Virginia old city. And like lots of old cities, we have to deal with our infrastructure problems. Public investment in infrastructure may not be exciting, but it is a critical component of planning the expected growth and attracting new businesses to the community, as well as encouraging existing businesses to stay here and to reinvest in us. Reinvestment in our infrastructure is an ongoing struggle as each year your needs, see, our needs and this community needs seems to outpace our resources. However, we did see a number of important projects completed in 2017, and I'm gonna mention some of those. Phase one, and if you remember that downtown utility and streetscape project had us going all around to avoid um, the street that that happened on, which was right out in front here. The project was completed. I'm happy to cut that ribbon in the fall with an 8.5 million budget. It took that much, it was about a million dollars a block. This project included upgrading water, storm and sewer uh, lines, along with improvements to the city's streetscape. So not only does it look better underneath the pavement, it looks better uh, beside the pavement and on top of it. So, and then, and then, that parking deck at the community market. We also replaced that. And in the process, we learned this new term. It's called subterranean void. What in the heck does that mean? Well, we'd already planned the work, because you gotta design that thing and get it going. But it got started a little sooner than I anticipated when a sinkhole appeared in the deck. And man, did we get to work, because we wanted you to be safe. But that project has resulted in a much more stable and attractive parking lot. So thanks to all those that put up with that, because people love that market on, um, on Saturday mornings. Late last year, we also the start, uh, saw the start of another huge project. It's $9.6 million Main Street Bridge replacement project, so please bear with us, folks. This is gonna take a while. This project is scheduled to be substantially completed later this year, but work isn't just happening downtown. A lot of folks say, oh, you're just all about downtown, you just keep working downtown, but not true. We have worked at other places in the community. The McConville Road project was completed on time and under budget. Now we love to hear that in city government, on time and under budget. And the much needed $12 million Wards Ferry Road and Logan's Lane project got underway last year. While these infrastructure improvements are critical, we know that they can be inconvenient, and you were inconvenient, I know. 
It was messy and sometimes frustrating, but the end results are safer roads and facilities, upgraded utility systems, and much more attractive gateways. City government isn't the only entity uh, investing in this community. And I, listen to some of these figures. It's unbelievable what the Lynchburg business community continues to lead the regional economy, the regional economy, with significant capital investment and job creation. Fiscal year 2017, Lynchburg companies invested over $80 million in new capital, and they created 300 and 22 jobs. That, that's pretty exciting. Commercial building permits in 2017 totaled more than, get this figure, $155 million in real property investment. Now that is applaudable for sure. Yes, please do. Last year around this time, we were happy to announce that Convergence, the largest customer service provider in the United States and the second largest provider globally, was making a $4.2 million investment in a facility here in Lynchburg. Well, guess what? We just heard this afternoon, Convergence has announced it is opening and hiring at their new facility, and when fully operational, they will create up to 400 new jobs in our community. I know, isn't that wonderful? And, and yes, yes. And the company site director for Lynchburg and his lovely wife is with us tonight. So please join me in welcoming Andrew Toskowski and his wife, Tanya. If you're here, please stand up. We heard you. Ah, yes. Welcome to Lynchburg, and thank you for doing business in our community. We're looking forward to having you here. Our own Office of Economic Development, Ms. Mar Margette over there, is working to bring creative solutions to strengthen the community's economy. One way they are doing this is by launching a new co-starters program that equips aspiring entrepreneurs with the insights and the relationships and the tools they need to turn their wonderful ideas into action and turn a passion into sustainable and thriving businesses. This program and others help people turn dreams into reality and in turn bolster our local economy. Several graduates of the Co-Starters program and one of their facilitators are, probably, are hopefully here with us tonight. Please stand and let us Thank you for following your dreams and taking this wonderful program. Co-starters, are you here, graduates? All right, yes. Thank you. I know it, so buy from them. <laughs> They've got wonderful businesses out there, and now, Please welcome Vice Mayor Trinae Tweedy back to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Foster. As you can tell, we've had a pretty eventful year, haven't we? When we talk about the economy, it's clear that an important part of a thriving city is a strong downtown. A strong downtown becomes the heart of a city and we all know how important it is to have a healthy heart. In the past 13 years, the private sector has invested approximately $74 million in the redevelopment of downtown buildings, and nearly 900 residential lofts have been developed. There are currently more than 5,300 employees working daily in downtown Lynchburg. Many of the buildings that have been dormant for years are now being renovated into living and commercial spaces. We are all anxiously, anxiously following the progress of two downtown jewels, the Academy Center of the Arts 
and the Virginian Hotel. In order to ensure the overall well-being of a city, we must have a safe community. And I am proud to say that this community is blessed with concerned and involved citizens as well as excellent public safety professionals. Each year, the American Red Cross recognizes what they term as everyday ordinary people making extraordinary contributions, putting their needs aside to help others in our community. Last year, the Lynchburg chapter of the American Red Cross honored two emergency services employees, Piper Vanderpeer and Stephanie Cutlip with Community Hero Awards. When a call came into 911, Stephanie provided the frantic caller with instructions on how to perform CPR on a child, and she quit, she quite possibly helps to save that child's life. When Piper received a call, she gave childbirth instructions to the caller and was on the telephone with the family when the baby was born. Stephanie has moved on to become a, de a deputy with a neighboring locality, but Piper is with us tonight. She was just recently promoted to the position of emergency program specialist. Thank you, Piper. Where are you tonight in the room? Thank you, Piper. Thank you for your quick thinking and your professionalism. Last year, our police department received its ninth consecutive accreditation award. The designation is given to law enforcement agencies who exhibit the highest levels of professionalism and transparency. The Community Action Team, or CAT, is continuing to establish strong relationships in our neighborhoods. The faith-based organization, One Community, One Voice, is working in partnership with the CAT team to provide positive activities for young people and strengthen communications among the residents and police. Their work is an excellent example of how citizens and police can collaborate and make this community safer. In addition to gaining a new chief this year, the fire department completed renovation of one of the city's oldest traditional fire stations, making it more state of the art while preserving the historic facade of the building. The department also launched a mobile app, Pulse Point, that empowers individuals with the ability to provide life-saving assistance to victims of cardiac arrest. In fact, the city launched three apps, Pulse Point, the city's Passport Parking app, and the Lynchburg City app. So we hope you've downloaded those apps and then found them helpful. And if not, you can do that tonight or tomorrow. Feel free to download for us. Lynchburg is a unique city in the region with our own story, our own challenges, and our own strengths to share with the world. The mayor and I have chronicled a few of last year's accomplishments, and believe me, it was difficult to narrow the list because we are blessed to have a community that works hard to make sure we remain a great place to live, work, and play. In a few weeks, the city manager will present her recommendations for the fiscal year 2019 budget. I know she and her staff had to make some hard decisions, and likewise, so will City Council. Those decisions must take into account the type of community you, the citizens, wish to call home. We must take a look at everything. There are no sacred cows, as they say. We must take a look at everything. We need all voices to be heard, and we encourage you to participate in community meetings and outreach. Unfortunately, our state and federal governments haven't kept up with the way our world is changing, and too often the burden has fallen on local government and our citizens. As we deliberate during the budget process, please know that the seven members of City Council, regardless of party affiliation, liberal, conservative, conservative or middle of the road, care deeply for this community, and we, like you, want the best for it, but we need your voice in order to make the right decisions. Last year, the mayor and I stood before this podium and together spoke to you about a problem in this community, the 24% poverty rate that exists in the city. Together, we issued a call to action, and we asked you to work with us to reduce poverty and help create pathways from poverty to progress. At this time, I would ask the mayor to join me here at the podium. Got it? <laughs> I got them all over town. <laughs> oh, 
am I. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. In May of 2017, we held the co first community meeting at EC Glass, and over 600 of you all attended, and hundreds of you all have signed up to be part of addressing the problem of poverty. That night was the first step in bringing awareness to this community about poverty. Since that first meeting, nine work groups have been working to create action plans with goals and success measures. Those groups are community education and awareness, child care, education, food disparity, legal system, transportation, health and mental health, workforce development, and housing. We know that there are some in the community who are skeptical about the Poverty to Progress initiative. For some of you, we may not be moving fast enough. A certain amount of skepticism can be healthy, but if you take nothing away or else away tonight, know that progress is being made. And I will repeat that. Progress is being made. Are we going to solve this monumental problem in a year or even five years? The answer is no. But we have successfully put the problems of poverty in this community in the forefront. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. We have taken the first step and I'm excited to see the progress. In the few minutes that we have left, and I promise you it's only gonna be a few more minutes, we want to tell you about some of the progress that has been made. We know that transportation is a barrier for many people living in poverty. I did see Brian here tonight from the Greater Lynchburg Transit Company. Well, thank you, Brian, and the company, and your board, because they have conducted a survey of riders and they are looking at ways to have shorter routes for the urban core that will enable riders to get to an employment sites and other locations in a timely manner. Many people in poverty have to spend well over 30% of their income for housing. This is prohibited and an added stressor. The Lynchburg Community Action Group has employed a housing navigator who will work with both landlords and tenants to ensure people have safe and affordable housing. Affordable health care is a huge concern for all of us. But for people in poverty, the cost can be another barrier. And preventive care, no, they, they aren't even, that isn't even a choice for them. The Community Action Network has led the way in creating a network of healthcare providers and organizations that prioritize health and compassion over bottom line and is working to break down the barriers that keep individuals from getting the care they deserve. The new Community Health Center on Fifth Street is a game changer for healthcare, especially for our citizens living in poverty. From the findings of national studies to the frightening statistics about the school to prison pipeline, the invaluable role of early childhood education is hard to ignore. The Poverty to Progress Education Work Group is taking steps to make it easier for parents to register their children for pre-K. On March 10th, they will be holding its first pre-K registration event at James Crossing Apartments. This is just the first of other events of its kind to bring information to parents and to encourage them to register their children and to start them on the right education path. We could go on and on, but we wanted to share just a portion of the work that is being done. Now be clear, okay, be clear now. Joan and I are not taking credit for all this work that's being done. Okay, understand that leaving tonight, we're not taking credit for all this work. <laughs> However, we do believe that one of the most important outcomes of the community conversation about poverty is that there are organizations and individuals that are beginning to think differently about poverty and what they can do to assist bringing people out of poverty. We have had the honor of meeting with a number of faith-based groups who have decided that they have not been doing enough in the community to address poverty and that it is time to set aside differences of ideologies and denominations in order to work together and to make a real difference. 
We applaud them for what they're doing and for what they are proposing. These are collaborations and conversations happening with groups that have really not connected before, like workforce <coughs> development, the legal system, and reentry, with the goal of reducing recidivism and helping people live successful lives after being incarcerated. Try saying that word really fast and you'll know <laughs> what I mean. I remind people all the time that there is no roadmap for this work, no blueprint that we can follow. We will have successes and we will have learning moments. What is important is that as a community we have said that this will be a city that is a great place to live, work, and play for everyone. I believe some of the facilitators and participants from the Poverty to Progress work groups are with us tonight. If you are, please stand. You are our heroes. If you're here, they've been working so hard. Aha, here you go. All right. Good. Don't be shy. They give of their time and their talents and sometimes their resources to help with this. So, we've come to the end. And I know you all want to get to the Galleria. They've got some great food down there. But I want to ask you to do one thing before you leave. Can you just stop a moment? Look around this room. We are different races. We have different backgrounds. Live in different regions of Lynchburg, different zip codes. We have different orientations. We have different beliefs. There is one tie, one tie that binds all of us. We are Lynchburg. And together, we will continue to move forward and achieve greater things. We are Lynchburg strong. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do every day, volunteers and all of you sitting out there, just the fact you came out on a Monday night to hear us stand up here and talk for over an hour. We thank you. And we wish that you would come back next year. We'll have great other things to report. But for right now, thank you and good night. Please join us in the Galleria for food. Thank you. Thank you.